most interesting things about this entire debate. Because here is the professor finding fault in a way that by now you may begin to find as petty as I do, and indeed as scientifically baseless as I do. But what he's doing is he's spending months finding fault not with those who are actively engaged in doing the scientific research on which the UN's policy is based, but instead addressing a speech by a known layman to a lay audience eight months ago. Now, whether that would be a sensible use of the professor's time, even if I had got things as wrong as he says I had got them, is not entirely clear. But what is surely odd is that time and time again, the IPCC, the UN's Climate Panel, whose job it is to get these things right, makes mistakes which are extreme in their severity and in their consequences and he has nothing whatever to say anywhere in his presentation in criticism of the IPCC, even where it got things wrong. And how does he know it got things wrong? Because I draw attention to it getting things wrong, serious things wrong, in my presentation. And we're going to come on to one of those now. Now, the slide you're looking at now is what I call the 2007 hockey stick. It's nothing to do with the medieval warm period, but it's the same thing. What they've done this time is to take the instrumental temperature record, which goes back 160 years, from the Hadley Centre and the Climate Research Unit at the University of East Anglia. And what I should explain is that the temperature in a chaotic object like the climate jiggles up and down quite a bit, and you can see that in the graph. It's all over the place. It's not just trending upwards or downwards, it's jiggling around. General trend, of course, is upwards at around a not particularly dizzying 0.4 Celsius per century, but nevertheless, it is an upward trend. But it's jiggling about up and down quite a lot. Now, one of the things that you may not do with a stochastic data set, that's one where you can't really guess which way it's going to jump next because it's moving around so much, it's a chaotic data set, is you may not arbitrarily and capriciously choose different start points and end points for different trend lines that you draw on that data and then draw any conclusions whatsoever from the relationships between the slopes of those trend lines as to what is happening to the general direction of the data in the underlying graph. Now I'm going to illustrate why that is a bogus statistical technique by reference to this next slide, which has four panels in it. And this next slide is compiled by me from exactly the same data set, combined, in fact, with two or three other data sets, so that we're looking at the period from 1993 to the present, top left, 97 to the present, top right, 2001 to the present, bottom left, and 2005 to the present, bottom right. And what you see is we start out with the temperature, top left, rising quite steeply, then rising less steeply, then falling a little bit, and then we're heading for a new ice age. Because I've chosen different starting points and ending points for my trend lines on the same data as the UN has been using. And yet what I'm showing is that instead of it ever getting more rapidly warm as we come to the more recent times. Instead, we're getting ever rapid, ever more rapid declines in temperature. So I've shown a completely opposite result. And who's right? Well, what I tend to do in my talks, and I did it in this talk, is I take a vote. I said, right, the IPCC doesn't do its science by measurement, doesn't do it by analysis, it does it by taking a vote. So we're going to take a vote. Hands up all those who think that the UN's graph was correct. And a lot of hands don't go up because they know by then that that one's wrong. So then I say, come on, chaps, who thinks that my graph is correct? And quite a few hands go up. And I then say, well, I told you at the beginning of my talk, don't believe a word I say. Because, of course, my graph is as bogus as the UN's graph. I've used the same bogus technique on the same data, and I've come to opposite results. So what does that tell you? It tells you that technique is what's bogus, and that therefore the UN shouldn't 
have used it. That was the point I was making in my talk. So first of all, what does he do? He says, well, he doesn't know where my data came from. Well, it says it came from the Science and Public Policy Institute. On all four of my panels it shows that, because we took four separate data sets, the Hadley Center and the CIU are one of those. We take the NCDC data set, National Climatic Data Center of NOAA in the United States. We take the RSS, Remote Sensing, Sy Sensing Systems data set of satellite temperatures of the lower troposphere. We take the Un University of Alabama at Huntsville, the UAH data set, and we take the arithmetic average of their monthly anomalies over the periods in question, and we compile what's known as the SPPI index. And that's how we compile our temperature graph. It's an average of all four available major data sets. And all of this was explained in my talk. But no, uh, the professor pretends that I never said any of that and says, I haven't provided this data. We don't know where it came from. We shouldn't have used Science and Public Policy Institute on these graphs. Yes, we should. We compiled the graph by using our own algorithm based on the other data and of course we give due acknowledgement in our monthly publication of this data to the places from which we get the data. So it's all fully declared and disclosed. Had he gone to the scienceandpublicpolicy.org website where we publish these graphs every month and he knew of that website because he mentions it in his talk, he could have looked all of this up and seen exactly how the graphs were compiled. But no, that's not good enough. He wants to, to find fault, so he says we shouldn't have used our own name on our own graph. So then he says, what I'm trying to show, what Chris Monkton is trying to show, he says, is that if you use different time scales, you can come up with different temperature trends. And that's something that's quite well known, he says, in the scientific community. And that's why you don't look at short-term temperature trends. Well, forgive me, but the UN's graph uses as its shortest-term temperature tr uh, trend a 25-year trend. And so we have used trends which are admittedly shorter than that, but uh, some of them not by very much, and we've still come to an opposite result. However, you can also take, and I'll show you now this on the next graph, you can take, uh, let us say, a, a trend line from 1905 to 1945, and 1905 to 2005, two trend lines, and the longer one that comes towards the present is at half the slope of the earlier one. And the earlier one is 40 years, and the longer one is 100 years. Is that long enough for you, Professor? It still shows the opposite result from that which the IPCC had come to. I'm not saying that the opposite result is the correct result. What I'm saying is that all such results, where you use multiple trend lines on a single stochastic data set and try to compare the slopes and draw conclusions from that comparison, that is an impermissible technique which will lead to errors unless by accident you happen to guess the right answer. It's not a sound technique. So he then says, and this is astonishing, only a moment after he has said you have to use long enough periods of data in order to establish what is happening to the trend in temperatures. He then says this, and what's interesting also is he may or may not know that 2009, according to NASA, is the second hottest year on record, and the 13 months which we've just completed, and I'm giving this talk, he says, in early summer 2010, is the hottest 13-month period on record. So here we have this professor telling me that I can't use periods of up to 25 years to draw any conclusions, and he then draws a conclusion from a period of only 13 months. Well, now that's academic dishonesty and double standards of a very low standard. It's not something which is acceptable in somebody who is claiming to be a professor.